My name is Kathy Hill and I uh, teach at Mountain Valley School in a little town called Sawatch. Uh, it's in the northern end of the San Luis Valley. And I have been teaching for 25 years. This is my 25th. It's always one of those moments when you get a kid who really makes a connection with something. Or they're constantly making that connection in something that you're doing that you don't think they're paying attention to. And they wake up and say, hey, how about? Or do you realize that? And they, they make those kind of connections. And, and you realize that what you're doing is making a, a connection for them. It's making a point for them. Um, they're engaged. And, and I guess that's pretty much, you know, for me, the, the defining moment in my day. When, I'm, when I see that with kids, I see those eyes light up that everything's good for them and everything makes sense. And they're not confused, they're not scared, and they're, they're, uh, they're going to do well. So I guess that's, for me, that defining moment during the day. Yeah. You know, as I said, about 15 years ago, we had double the kids, first of all. Uh, so the economy and the movement and the, the migra migratory nature of our valley and the area, you know, kids have left, families have left. So that really was a drawback. So losing those kids obviously loses funds for our district. And when we do that, we lose programs. Uh, we lose things like music, things like shop. We used to have auto mechanics. That's all gone. Um, those kinds of budget cuts just take away from the experiences we can give to our kids. Uh, you know, they te tell us to teach in a 21st century, we've got to prepare the kids, yet we have no money, we have no funds. I'm teaching on computers that are from 1999. They're still 12 years old, <laughs> you know, and I, I, can't, I can't have children trying to be prepared for a future when they're still working with old equipment, old things. So those kind of budget cuts have, have really affected us. We've had to do some combining of classes here and there. We've had to, we've lost high school teachers for our high school core classes. Um, and it, it makes it difficult then to, to be able to pick up and do the good job that you need to for kids. So those budget things have hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can really see, I can see a difference. Being in the school district, how much we have had to take away uh, from our kids. And it's not taking away from teachers, not taking away from staff, although we've lost staff uh, and we've, uh, you know, changes in positions. But it, it takes those programs away from the kids. As I said, they don't get that broad education that we need. They don't get that, that ability to be able to go to music and experience those things, to go to a wood shop class, to have, you know, the tech kinds of classes that we have, to experience different kinds of classes. Our, our high school class is down to core classes, you know, basic three different histories, three different sciences, and, and very few electives for those kids because we don't have the ability to offer that for the kids. Our elementary kids, I, I have to teach PE. Uh, we don't have a PE teacher to come in and teach. So as a, as a classroom teacher, I have to go in and teach PE. Um, next year, we're going to have to teach music. I'll have to teach music, which I have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> but, but we won't have a music teacher. Our funds simply don't allow it. So those budget cuts have really affected. It's affected some of our sports programs. Uh, it's affected some of our community programs that we've been able to do in the past. We've had funds for. So I, I think 10 years ago, the kids had a lot more opportunity, a lot more broad education availability. We don't have it anymore. I, I think budget cuts, those kinds of things have really uh, knocked our programs down in our school district, especially a small area like us who don't, we don't get a lot of funds and, and uh, don't have a lot of opportunity then to provide for kids. So, How do you keep those you know. kids motivated? You know, you, you as a teacher do as best you can. You become the most diverse <laughs> and the most differentiated teacher that you can be. Uh, you know, you just offer as much as you can. And a lot of times it, it takes it out of your own pocket. It takes your own time. You know, I'm really passionate about this, Mike, because I see kids who suffer every day, who come in who don't have the things that they need, you know, and the things that I can't offer them as a teacher. I can't give to them as those things because I don't have the availability. I don't have the time. I don't have the training. Uh, a lot of times we have kids, we see so many kids in our districts that come in with ADHD, ADD, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, RAD, you know, all of those things. And I have to become their psychologist, their counselor, their parent. Uh, we, you know, feed them, we clothe them. We have become those be all end all of everything. And it's really hard for me then to be just an educator, to do the things that I need to in education. And you, you motivate those kids by 
again, I have to take on some responsibility in the role. Oh, sorry, of hitting the microphone. I have to take on that role of, of being everything for those kids, you know, to be able to do that. So uh, I've seen it change, and it, it, it becomes disheartening to me. And, and you lose out, and you feel like, why bother a lot of times? So with, with our kids and, well, with, with our staff, it, it obviously brings a mood down. It, once again, we're facing cuts. In the last probably 10 years in, in this school district, we have faced more cuts every year. It has been, uh, this year we're not going to have this much. This year we're not going to make this much. And part of it is our student population has, has left, so we lose funds there. But then the state comes and says, for our district, we're going to cut you another $800 per student, $800 less. So you as a teacher, again, go, oh, what else are they going to take away? Now I won't have a budget to spend. Now I won't be able to buy books. Now I won't be able to buy materials. Uh, you know, now we're going to have to take on more responsibilities, as I said, to be able to like teach music or PE, those things that, that I, I'm not trained in doing that. So obviously the mood is folks say, why bother? You know, why continue to try it? It, it really becomes hard. It, it becomes something that you get, you get depressed about and you feel like, ah, I'm not going to fight anymore. You know, and, and a lot of times a lot of apathy can occur for teachers and, and for, uh, for the staff as, you know, well, they're going to just keep cutting us. They're just going to keep you know, making us do more things, et cetera. So I think it really brings our mood down. Uh, the, you know, the morale of the staff is low. And again, everybody's worried about my job and where am I going to be or am I going to have a job, especially in the, in the economy as it is. So Would you become a teacher this year? Oh, no. I, I honestly wouldn't. I, I taught for 25 years. And if I were becoming a teacher, I wouldn't do it. I, I would say, I'm not going to get into the teaching profession. Look how much they have cut those for those kids look how much how many funds you know or and availability for kids i hear you know, the bigger districts closing schools constantly and i feel like i, I wouldn't want to battle with it you know so i probably wouldn't i'd go into another profession i think i'd choose something different if uh, if i were starting out in the teaching profession I, and it's sad to say because then there's a lot of good people probably that could be in our profession you know that study that came out that said that teachers are the most effective, you know, uh, precursor for kids, right? I mean, we are the one thing for kids, whether the kids come from poor backgrounds, rich backgrounds, teachers are the single factor in that classroom that makes success for that kid. But when we hear, when I hear that, again, we're going to cut budgets, we're going to take away unions, we're, we're going to take more of your rights away, we're, you know what, we want you to do a whole lot more with a whole lot less. It, it, it just does, again, brings your mood completely down and you, you don't want to fight anymore because you say, uh, here I am supposed to be the single factor in that kid's life to be able to do everything I need to, to be able to bring that kid up, to be able to teach that kid. I can make a difference with that kid, but yet you're going to cut my budget. You're going to take away my salary. You're going to make me pay in more into my, in my uh, para, my um, uh, retirement fund because you know, the budget, the state budget is all messed up, well then take away from me again. So again, my particular, you know, paycheck is not going to cover. I already put money into IRAs and into, you know, 403B plans because para, my retirement's not going to cover what I need to when I do retire. Uh, it's just not going to be there for me. So anybody who, you know, when you talk about teachers working, you know, nine months a year, et cetera, come to my classroom. You come and visit. Uh, come and visit with me. Come spend a week with me. Come vis visit me in the summertime and see where I'm at when, I, when I'm required to take classes and be able to keep up my license and do the things that I need to uh, to help my kids out. So that's what I have to say. That and, and people that say that have never been in the system. They've never spent that time with a teacher and things. So I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, I, I just have to say again, it just feels like for me in the last 10 to 15 years in education, I've not been able to do the things that I need to, or that I could do. Uh, you know, I work really hard with my kids. I, I try to do the best I can every day as a professional. I, I try stand up for my profession, and I hope that everyone else does too. And, and I guess as a, as a, um, a small area, small school district, them, the, the district, you know, surviving it may not happen in the next five years. We don't know. Our, our district right now is solvent, we're okay, but we're still on that level of we're going to need to make some cuts, we're going to need to do, we may have to do some combining with other districts. You know, how does that take away? Again, it'll, it'll take away from kids. Uh, again, programs to be cut, programs to be lost, um, and it makes it more difficult on, on an individual myself to be able to, 
to give a well-rounded education to kids. That's, that's the hard part, is that I can't provide that really well-rounded education that we'd like to do. Um, and, and to prepare kids. Our, our area, again, is very depressed, and the economy is so, is so depressed here. It's, it's hard to see, if, to see these kids where they will be. You know, you always want to break that cycle for them. You don't want them to stay in that depressed mode or in that low income area. You want them to be able to break out. And, and I don't know that even teaching first grade that I can, I can give them enough now so that in 10 years, 11 years when they graduate, they'll be able to move on and do some other good things. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how we can do that. Um, you, you fight every day, you know, as a teacher I fight every day for my kids. And, and I, I hope and I, and I pray and I work real hard and, I'm, and I have standards that I have to meet and I, and I uh, put standards for myself that I make sure I meet for my kids. And, and again, I become uh, diversified in my teaching and I differentiate for my kids. And um, I, I'm just hoping, you know, in, in five to ten years that, uh, that our student count will be up and that we will be able to provide for kids versus continue to take away. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. The way I see it, it's continue, a continued downfall and a continued downward, downward drive versus, versus upward.